so today what we're going to do is a lab activity. This will count as a lab portion of your grade. Um, so you are going to have to actually put it in to turn it in. So the lab that we are actually doing is called weathering. Mr. G has been teaching you guys about weathering and erosion a little bit. Uh, yesterday, I believe, was the lesson on weathering and erosion. So now we're going to do it with household items. Um, it's going to be in two parts. The first part you're going to need... The first part is going to be actually um, on the lab itself it'll say sugar cubes but most of us do not have sugar cubes anymore if you do great if not you can substitute um five animal crackers five pretzels five chips five goldfish whatever it is that you have that can actually break down semi easily crackers i said crackers um but yeah so you're gonna take you're gonna count them out as five and the first thing you're gonna do is one two three four five Okay, you're gonna put them on your plate, okay? And you're gonna take a picture with them, okay? That picture should go on the data table. See where it says drawing, you're not going to draw it. You're gonna take a picture so this way we know that you're actually doing it, okay? This will also count as your selfie for this lab, okay? Um, it does say mass, you're not going to uh, be massing these out because you guys don't have individual scales at home. All right, so just worry about the actual picture, not the drawing, okay? Then you're going to take them and put them into your hard plastic container. Doesn't matter what kind it is. Put them in, cover it up because we don't want anything to go anywhere, and you're going to shake it. Now, you're not going to go like this. It's not going to work. You have to shake it. You're going to do that for 20 times, okay? Then you're going to take them. Put them back out on the plate, and you're going to take your next picture. Then you're going to do that for an additional 20 shakes. You're going to keep doing that until you reach a total of 100 shakes. So you're going to do this five separate times, okay? Each time I want you to actually take a picture of yourself and put it there. Then you can go back and do the uh, analysis question, okay? That's part one. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Part two is a little bit more difficult. Now, you may or may not have Alka-Seltzer or something that effervesces at home. So if you have um, Airborne or anything like that and the parental units will allow you to actually do this, um, great. If they don't, I'm going to actually be filming myself doing it and you're going to have to do the lab itself. So the second part of this is just going to be me doing it. Now, in order for you to do this lab, you need two identical ceramic mugs, okay? I don't want you doing this in a glass because if you put hot or boiling water into a regular glass or a plastic glass, it will melt. So right now I'm boiling the water. <clears throat> so you're gonna put the same amount of hot water in one mug and the same amount of cold water in the second mug, okay? So then again, here I have the generic version of Airborne, okay? Or you have Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer is just an antacid, it's a pain reliever. It will dissolve in water. Now that's the big thing. Um, bath bombs would work too. Yeah, bath bombs would work too, but you'd have to do it at the exact same time. So the thing is, is the whole point of this is to determine chemical weathering, okay? You are going to determine the rate at which the antacid is going to dissolve. Okay, so one of the steps that you have to do is before you actually add the Alka-Seltzer is you need to take the temperature. For those of you, again, who don't have it, I'm using a regular meat thermometer, right? And I will put this in here, let the temperature change. All right, so this is my cold water one, right? And you're gonna create a data table. You're gonna wanna do your Alka-Seltzer ones twice if you have them at home. So once it stops moving, my cold water temperature, for those of you who aren't able to do this at home, mm -hmm. it's still moving, mm -hmm. is 66.2. Okay, so my cold water temperature is 66.2 degrees Fahrenheit. You have to be specific, remember? Now my hot water temperature... It's definitely not. Yeah, it's going to be hotter. For me, I boiled the water. So we know it should be about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But it has been sitting out for a little while, so it will cool off. Or it will glare. There you go. Just trying not to burn my hand. 
Okay, so this is at 167.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so those of you, for those of you who don't have this at home and can't do the actual experiment at home, use my numbers. If not, you're going to use your own numbers. So you should have a digital thermometer, whether it's the one that you use when you're sick or your parents may have actually a glass thermometer. Ask their permission. Great. Okay, ask their permission before you just go and take stuff from your parents because we don't want any nasty phone calls or emails, okay? And also you don't want to break something without them knowing, all right? So be very, very, very careful. Another thing, guys, when you are putting your thermometer in, if you noticed, I was still holding it in the water. The part of the thermometer that reads the temperature should never touch the bottom or the sides of your beakers or, or your, uh, I used to say beakers, your mugs. Okay, so just make sure that you're doing that. Okay, make sure you're holding it. Try not to burn yourself. Again, it doesn't have to be boiling water. It can just be hot, hot, hot water that comes out of your tap. Use an oven mitt when taking the temperature. Yeah, just make your life easier. Use an oven mitt. Here, it's safety first. All right, guys, so for those of you who don't have antacid tablets that you can throw in, and Tums will not break down as easily. So if you do have Tums, don't waste them. Okay, this is specifically made so that when it hits the water, it's going to dissolve. So this is my hot water. So for those of you who have not, do not have this at home, what I want you to do is the second I drop my antacid tablet inside here, you need to start your time. And you're not going to stop your time until it's completely dissolved. That's the whole point of this one, is to see the rate at which um, the temperature will actually uh, change the um uh, Rate of erosion, okay? One, Weathering. two, three. <coughs> it's still there. Don't touch the water, it's hot. Please don't be stupid. Okay, stop your timer. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to the cold water one. Right now, this is just tap water. Now, this one was extremely hot. You don't have to use boiling water. You can use like run your tap water hot, 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 and then do it. Um, you will see a difference. So watch when I put this in. Three, two, one, start your timer. Now you don't want to stir this because if you stir this, you're going to activate it more. Okay. You don't want to stir either one of these at any point. You're going to keep going until it all disappears or if, <laughs> or uh, all the bubbles go away. So it should all disappear and all the bubbles should go away. That was our lovely daughter. The joys of teaching from home. <laughs> That's also the music that you hear in the background and the dog barking. Okay, so you should stop your timer now. All right guys, so remember that you need a hard plastic container, a plate because you don't wanna make a mess wherever you're doing it. Please do this in your kitchen um, if possible. So do it when the parental units or you are not cooking dinner, okay? Because you don't wanna get in their way either. All right, so when you take out your whatever it is, your animal crackers, your pretzels, your chips, whatever it is, put it directly on the plate so you don't make a mess, okay? <laughs> a little side note about the chemical weathering part. Um, when you do open the antacid tablets, right, they can break and that's okay as long as you keep them separate. So as long and as long as all of one antacid tablet gets into the hot water and one antacid tablet gets into the cold water because you want them to be the same mass. Um, don't forget to take your quiz. <laughs> so when you're when actually using your thermometer, you're going to want to first ask your parental permission so that you don't just take something without asking them. Second thing is you're going to want to make sure that you don't have the metal part or the end part of your thermometer, depending on what kind you have, touch the sides of the ceramic mug or the bottom. Just like we would in lab, you don't want that to happen. Be very careful when dealing with the hot, hot, hot water. Um, last but not least, guys, don't forget to take your quiz, which is today. Um, you only have from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. to do it. Good luck, and uh, we miss you guys. Bye. So, like we said, uh, make sure that you're doing your lab. Uh, make sure you submit it on Turnitin. It will be due on Monday for everybody. 
and good luck enjoy the weekend and hope you do good on your quiz all right guys catch you later bye